take a look at the new shoes. This is the ratcheting mechanism right here. That's the uh, self adjuster. Let's go on the other side. Let's go ahead and change those shoes out. Then we'll move the camera, come back over here, and do this side. We got some time. 12 o'clock. Still got 10 minutes to uh, check it out. So we're ready to charge it. All right. So, tools I need. I like these vice grips. Need those vice grips? But I did, yeah, I did. Need those vice grips. For this particular type of brakes, I like to use vice grips. So, did I bring that uh, eyeball over here? A little bit of a. Yeah, I left it. I might use this. Get those anchor plate anchor clips off. This or this. Depending on the mood. All right, so you guys can see what I'm doing, sort of. Yeah. Move this more sheer, maybe. Probably blocking most of it, but yeah, I'll try not to block it. It's tough for me to see it, so I'm gonna. Try to be mindful not to block stuff. All right, so these clips right here pull the shoe against the backing plate. This is the return spring, this is the return spring, and this is a spring for the self adjuster. So, first spring I want to get off is that bottom one because it's not really doing anything for me right now. I'm going to take vice grips, locking pliers. I prefer vice grip brand vice grips because they seem to work the best. I'm going to go ahead and clip this spring. And I'm going to kind of give it a little while well, pulling and pop that spring out. Now, you're not used to doing rear drum brakes. You have a short memory. Take a picture of it before you take it apart. Your cell phone nowadays has a camera in. Now this top one, I'm gonna try to do the same thing. Try gripping it, I'm gonna try pulling it, stretching it on that side. See if I can get it to pop off from within the hole in this uh, actually. Alright, it's not going to come out. This type of clip, I'm going to push this in while sliding it down, it looks like. Or lifting the pin up, one or the other, whatever works. There we go. This should come out the back side. Should remove this one shoe. That shoe comes out right there. Keep your hardware organized. Next clip squeeze in there if you can. Pop that out. She was free. Now let's see if we can get this spring out. Yeah, there you go. That's the spring. So that spring was hooked in on that side. So what I should have done was pulled this side out first. I should have done. Alright, now this other spring is there. It's going to be a little tougher. So we we'll move that side. Don't do that. Yeah. I'm not gonna get that back in yet, but that's how I got it out. Figure it out. Move this clip here. Now this is gonna work. So this is gonna be interesting. I've gotta slide this back and get that off here. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna clean all this up. And get it ready to go back to the other part. I'll go changing that out. 
Make my trusty brake clean. Set it down. Oh, that dust and dirt flow off. Again, try not to do it. Now, this is not asbestos. This has not been in vehicles since the 80s. Late 90s. Um, so, still don't want to breathe it. Time check. Four minutes, we'll take a look at that, see where we're at. All right, so you can see it's pretty clean. I'm just going to give it a quick swipe of everything. This cleans off pretty easy when it's dry. Doesn't have any oils or grease in it. Okay. So these sit here. And when you step on the brakes, they move out. So they rub on these pads. They also sit on here. And you can see the paint has been scraped off. So these are the points you want to put a little lube on. We used to use white lithium grease. We just use caliper grease now. Because caliper grease doesn't wash away so easy. You could use dielectric silicone grease. That will keep you from getting a squeak noise when you step on the brakes. You hear a squeak noise coming from the back of the car when you have drum brakes like this. It's coming from these pads. You'll step on it, and you squeak, and then you let them go. You hear a squeak. And from this. That's a pretty good dab there. And a little dab there. Not that you have to in there, but it doesn't hurt. Alright, so that's this side. Now, we're going to do the other side. Alright, now let's go ahead and get the new shoe out. New shoes out and the new hardware kit. Somewhere in these boxes, I have hardware kit. And shoes. Alrighty then. Do this side. That there for now. Let's grab you. Let me go get my slide cutters. Let me show you how I do these without fighting. How about not fighting the mechanics? Got these closed down pretty far. Take these slide cutters. Try to get the head of a spring, even in between the spring coils if I can, just enough to grip it. Slide it in, squeeze the slide cutters, take the vice grips, clip it on the cable, and now the cable can be played with for any problems. Let's make sure this is the right one, and it is. Slide it on the way it came off, open up the vice grips, and boom, swapped over. So now, I need to deal with this silk duster. So, not too bad. What I need to do is I need to compress this as low as it'll go, as small as it'll go. Because that's the self-adjustment right there. When you step on the brakes, what happens is this moves out and the spring brings it in. And that is what makes self-adjustment. All right, hardware kit. Hardware kit is the spring hardware kit. Comes with enough materials for both sides. So I need to find all these springs that I took out. Another one down this way. Thank 
garbage can. It goes away. So we had a blue spring. We had a blue spring. We had a small blue spring. Small blue spring. So let's do this one first. Since this was the one. It's more of a pain in the butt. The rest goes there. This goes here. That. Pins to turn the hole. This is where it becomes a balancing act. Now these tips are slightly different than the others, and that these have a these have a slot for this to glue. It takes some force to compress that spring because it's a new spring. That's why you get new hardware is because the new hardware works better. No, because it's tighter. This is always the fun part. It's always easier on your eye level with the vehicle. Otherwise, you're up on a lift. Around like this becomes a bit cumbersome. Go. Oh, really? Where'd you go? Ah. <sighs> Compress yourself. I have to hold it in still to do this. I think it's falling apart over here. Heating up the metal a little bit without doing that. Oh, wrong way. Fun stuff. Alright, let's try getting this on here first. Let's try getting the self adjuster in. I bet that shouldn't make a difference with me playing with this thing, but I'm gonna try it. I'm trying to put my body weight in this. Then I can't turn it. I can't move off the side. Come on, get yourself in the hole. Normally the clips aren't as bad, just this type of clip is kind of a pain. Okay, there we go. Now we've got it. Take this. Grip it, rotate it. Come on. There we go. Now it's engaged. Get the shoe up where it belongs. Now let's see if we can get this in. 
where it belongs. Get rid of that. These are the set. There we go. Okay. Now we just got to do the other one, right? The other side. This. Get the other clip and the other post. There's that screwdriver. Try the screwdriver on this side. All right. Did we get any foliage over here? Go ahead and put this on here. Put this on here. Get that through the hole it goes to, which is that one right there. We can get, we can get that back in later. Get the self adjuster can go back on last. After you get this screws on here. All right. That pin go, I heard it fall. Oh, the pin fell on sitting on top of the cable. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now that was a little easier because I had this shoe kind of down in this groove here and that I can now lift up and push into place, which I should have had this up there first. Alright, so blue spring next. Now this blue spring was so this. Then, uh -huh. Ooh. 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 Yeah, you do. Where's this? This goes here. This goes here. This goes. Yeah, I had the wrong hole. Did you catch all that, guys? That's how I was able to do that without taking the shoes all the way back off. Clip onto that hole I had that other spring into. It's a second spring, not the first spring. Or second hole. Put this on and I'm gonna try to put it the edge of the spring I have to do. Try to pull this out. See if we can hook that sucker into that hole. Stop! Come 
on the pad. Nobody wants to do drum break. You want nobody wants to do drum breaks? going on right here. Oh, it's all the way. What I did. But that's where I left you. But that's where I left you. Something does to either ratchet itself back out or I don't have ratchet it back out. I reset it. I have maximum movement to there. Good movement on there. We get this to go. 
by that hole. So, center that. That's my new hardware is right there. My shoes is right there. Shoes right there. These two shoes. Springs. Trash. <sighs> All right, so this side's done except you drum back on. Let's go do the other side, I guess. Should be well past that time. Let's see if we stick out a vacuum in that. We need the camera to do it. Over to the other side. Oh, I like to fall asleep. This side will be a little easier because it doesn't feel so cramped over here. Still holding 30 pounds, 30 inches of vacuum. Still standing, right? It shows I'm streaming. I don't know if I am or not. It still shows I'm streaming. Take a peek what we got here. Oh, I see a heads up camera for some reason right now. I found this all just being a disaster right now, isn't it? There we go. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is see if I've got a live stream still. Showing Twirlies here. It says I'm live. Says I'm live. All right, looks like it's still working. All right, all right, looks like it's still working. Sorry about that little pause if you're watching. Looks like it's still working. Probably not, but it looks like it's still working. All right, let's go ahead and do the other side now. So as you go a little quicker, and that we've already gone through the panes, the other side. So, blasting, which 
put on that side. I'll pop this one on first on this side. Not an easy feat, I'll tell you that. Got these springs kind of fold around and everything. That's the same way we did the other way, other side. Took it off, we took it off this way, this side. I just got lucky last time. I just forced it out. That's what I did. I just forced it out. Let's go ahead and pop this bottom spring on now. Well, they make all kinds of spring pliers and stuff, and the reason why I don't like because it gouges out. And while I don't care about the old shoes, I do care about the new shoes. So I'd rather fight with them this way. Fight with them later. And just having it ratcheting up. That's not right on the other side. That side's not grabbing and ratcheting. This side is. So I have a feeling I have something on the end right over there. I have a feeling I don't think it's supposed to go up on the side of there. Like that. Almost like I'm getting a shoe on wrong or something. I'm going to have to figure that out. I'm going to have to fix that side. Yeah, let's finish this side first. Oh, this is also a lot stiffer over here than it was over there. So, second hole. Oh, I didn't get it so easy. And it probably taking a whole other side apart because just uh, that side, this side just feels so much stiffer with the old springs in it. The new springs, it should feel stiff. So something doesn't seem right on the other side then. Heck. There we go. Break clean.
All right then. Dab here and there. All right. Um, you, you, that, like that. That. Grab us a green spring right here. This green spring is there. This goes like this. This goes like this. Do one first. It's in there, right? And there was some sprung jerk. Not so easy to take out like the other one was. I have to recheck the other side because this side's doing some a little different stuff. This side's doing some different stuff. Alright, shoe. This is supposed to hook. Like that. That's the thing I'm gonna have to check on the other side. I don't think it's hooked in on the other side. It's just kinda a uh, really stupid thing. It's just kind of set on there, not hooked. It needs to be hooked for that self adjustment to work. I'm going to take that aside, part, partially at least. That's it. Inside's usually a little weak. We not this big. Oh, it's just kind of on there. Come on, man. this on there. Oh, 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 oh. Double jerk. You got it. Then I don't like it. Let's try it. There we go. Eh, maybe we should have been using a screwdriver. Alright, so that's on there like that. Stay like that. Now we can go ahead and 
Bring the soft plaster in. Spring out and maybe we'll be self adjusting all the way now. All right, so the green spring, green spring now. And goes in here. There. I'm going to try to get that sucker to go in that hole. I wish I had to use words like try to get the hole. Stuff. See, this doesn't seem to be so people friendly. So, so this type of springs are saying it to the friendly one. It's usually not so bad. Usually they don't have such a twist to them to get them in. Try it here to so push it, pull and push at the same time. Just doesn't want to go in the hole. Whew. There it is. See how far we can get this to go in. Now, hopefully, that's enough to get the drum on. By not a couple of minutes. Gotta go around the other side and fix that. Go around the other side and fix it. See if we can fix that side. It's definitely not right. Definitely not the way it should be. It should be hooked in. This side should be hooked in. Okay. Take a peek. You get that side right. Ah. <sighs> That, as you expected, start to pick the machine here. And that spring has tension to it, so that side's fine. Just this side, but it's not hooked in. So I guess I'm going to have to take these big springs out and readjust that self adjuster. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna get this thing out. Get out. It hurt something. Came out easy. This one next. Okay. Do that still there. Let's get to that screwdriver out. Press the second back to spin it. Like that. That's how you get the back to spring out of there. Alright. So. This is supposed to be put in the center. It's on the center cluster. It's supposed to hook on that little. The loop thing there. There. But I think this is supposed to go up and into there. That feels better. Does not like this hole. I don't know what it is about this pen and this hole. Does not like it. That, my friends, is why we never rip apart both sides at the same time. Because if you do, you could end up lost. In this case, I feel something wasn't right when I took the other side of the car. This felt too buff. Come on. Spin the knife in there. Felt too connected. Get the front shoe off. Get the leaning shoe off. But two connect. I don't know if you just heard that sucker ratchet. Make it work. Make it work. All right, bottom screen back on. Sometimes if you haven't done these in a while, like I have. The last time I did rear drums, I'm freaking focus. See, at least eight years ago. I'm very trying to focus. I mean, I'm not even going to sing play out of this. Are you sticking with it there? Thank you. Yeah. See, when I pull on it, it should. It should right now. That's how that self-adjuster works. When you step on the brakes, the service brakes, the hydraulic cylinders push out, and if there's room to click, it clicks, and then it holds it out there. So next time you step on the brakes, the pedal doesn't have to go down so far. So that's how these self-adjusters work. They're very reliable self-adjusters. Much more reliable than the Star Wars style. It's just they're finicky, that's all. It has to be exactly right. Alright, let's go on. Okay. Spin around. Right there. Yep, yeah, that's it. Alright, let's go ahead and center this. Center this. Go ahead and bring this in as far as it goes. 
see as much free space as possible. That. See if this drum will go on. If the drum will go on, it will automatically adjust when you step on the brakes. Like that. Okay, it's going to be the other side. I gotta brush that all leaf up. Yeah. Let's see if the rake's back. I gotta rake the leaf up. <sighs> Sun doesn't hit this far back as much as it does this. So we're gonna the rake. The wind up goes. Track this down a little more. But like, they're not totally not the shoes, but let's just make sure the shoes are center. Alright, let's go ahead and torque those to 100 foot pounds. Put the caps on and call it a day for this half break as well. Get the chicken in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The light. I'll look up this torque spec, and if it's above 100 foot pounds, pop the caps back up and retool them. Uh -huh. Hard to turn on your, your fingers, which is supposed to be a lot now because you don't want your wheel falling off. I'll add the torque spec below once I look it up. I felt about right. I'll do the rear shocks later. Got him, I've got the wheels off. I want to go around. Probably going to do the rear shocks after I do the AC stuff. All right, so we got to get this cap back on. Kind of has this ring, rim around it here. Give it a little tap. Go. Tap, tap. There it goes. Now you can see where I got plus that off. Without any other impressions on that, I'm going to have to call it the first time. That cap has been on. Because usually there's an impression that's been pulled off. Okay. Let's go ahead and 
pop this cap back on. But with that impression, that'll make this cap a little easier to get off because now you have a place to stick the screwdriver into it. And there goes the head camera. Oh, well, here the head camera just went out. So we'll find out what happened there. Those aren't connected. Still connected. Ah. Uh, let's bring it back. I don't know what's going on. Power thing. Well, I lost power. Probably lost power from that stupid power. I'm gonna try putting that in my front pocket instead of my back pocket. Maybe it'll work better. All right, let's see. Are we still streaming? We're still streaming. I don't know if it's one continuous long stream or if it's split it up like last week. Uh, if it splits it up, what I do, is I record this while I'm doing it. Now, I don't know how long it'll record for, but I'm recording it while I do it. Uh, that just is what that is. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is recharge this thing. Still 30? Yeah, still holding back. Well, good, there's, that means there's no major leaks. So what I need to do now is, is Get the scales in the 134A tank in the basement. It'll take me about a second. Probably going to lose range on the Wi Fi on the head camera. What's going on? Alright, let's see, did we lose the head camera? Oh, no. Alright, so this tank might have enough. Find out here. This is a scale. And this tank over here, that probably could use that tank. Been sitting long enough. It's cool though, though. The tank is cool, it's cool. This tank is mine, so. Probably shouldn't. Let's see the top of here. Put this here. Put this. Maybe that hole lined up with the hole inside the tank. My luck, it's not enough. But I only need 18 ounces. All I need. Is that supposed to be? I only need 18 ounces. 1.12 pounds of all this power materials. Hopefully, this has enough in it to do that. 
that is. I don't really want to touch that. Same like that. Turn you on. It should zero itself out. Zero right now. So open up the tank. I should flow gas. The manifold gauges. Now, if I open up the manifold gauge and watch this, let me change the settings. This way. Go this way. And I'm going to flow it until it says 18 ounces. And hopefully, it will. Half an ounce. Seven ounces. One ounce. Two, 1.4, 1.7. <laughs> Usually it goes a little faster than this, but the tank's almost empty. I should have recycled the tank into the other tank. One and a half ounces. Now my pressure is up to 50 on the low side. And the reason why I'm doing it on the low side is because I can turn this car on. I might turn the AC on and suck it to the tank out. How do you empty a refrigerant tank? It's on max AC. Full pull. Running at three and a half ounces, three point nine, four ounces, four three. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Four five, four six, four eight, five, by four, and I went back down. Five by two. The wind's blowing too, so. My low side now is at 27. My high side is at 160. 6.1, 6 6.4, 6 6.6, 6.8, 7, 7 ounces. Low side pressure is going to keep building up until the cooling fan comes on. I think it just went out. I think it just came out low. Yep. And now the now the high side gauge is going down. That's a half pound. Eight ounces is a half pound. That's what I'm going to have to indicate. I'm going to have to switch the tanks. That's what I'm going to have to switch the tanks. So I'll just keep track of how much I put in there and then just continue on with the other tank. Tank popped around too, so about nine ounces, or nine ounces, I should say. I'm slowing down, tank's probably empty now. Guess it didn't have anywhere near as much as I thought in that tank as I thought I had. Again, it's a cool day. I'm 
gonna turn this off. I'm gonna wait for the wind to calm down like it is right now. I put in nine ounces. Let's go ahead and switch tanks. I gotta put in eleven more ounces to fill it up. Now you have to add a little bit for hoses because you're gonna be pushing gas through the hose also. All right. So first things first. First thing I gotta do is get the air out of this tank. That's refrigerant. Because if you don't get the air out. You're going to uh, push the air into the car. That's not a good thing. So I, you had about one ounce per hose. -ish. Usually two ounces for a long hose. We got. We'll call this one ounce. We'll call it two ounces extra. So zero this out. We need to do a. Oh, sorry, I had to zero it out and not turn it off. Either way, it'll. It should zero itself once it restarts. There we go. So now we're at zero ounces. We want to add 11 to make it 18. And we're going to add two ounces for hoses. Let's call it two ounces. Zero this out. Now let's go ahead and open this up. It's going a lot faster now because this tank's got a lot more gas in it. Nine, ten, there's eleven. I close the valve. Eleven point eight. Open the valve up a little bit. Twelve point seven. Open the valve just a hair. There we go. Thirteen. That's thirteen ounces right there. Ended up at twelve point eight. Go ahead and close this valve off. Let's take a look at our pressures. Got about 25 on the low, two, uh, 230 on the high. We only charged her up to the high side. I guess I never opened that bag up. <laughs> I guess that was all on the line. So we're still at 25, 25, 23-ish. Little side gauge. It's looks like it's cycling on and off right now. Yeah, it's cycling. It's kind of odd for this type of day, but okay. I'm going to go ahead and drive it for a couple days like this, see what happens. I'm not sure why it's cycling. Usually, might just because it's a cool day out. Might just because it's a cool day out. Let's see how it goes. I got a temperature gauge. Stick it in the dash, see where we're at. Here in max AC, you want to stick this in the center vent, see where you're at. Feels cool. I'm uh, sure to check that for the temperature today. You guys can refer back to the gauge maybe to see what temperature it was today. So let's sit there for a couple minutes. Make sure this valve is closed. Let's open this off. I'll have to take this off. See how it sealed it. There's no gases coming out of here. Go ahead and put my end cap back on. Still got gas in here. Go ahead and shut this off. Still cycling. Got a thermostatic expansion valve in this vehicle. So pressures are set by, by that. We're down to it's about 40 degrees, which isn't bad, obviously. Uh, it's probably about 65, 60 degrees out here, so 20 degree drop is not bad. That's basically how you have to gauge it by 
ambient temperature versus AC's temperature. It is air conditioning and not cooling. It's not like when you turn your heat on to get heat. It's air conditioning. It's conditioning the air by removing moisture from it and also lowering the temperature. It does that by, uh, as the air flows past the evaporator core, it will pick up moisture, which will drip out that little drain hole on the bottom. Uh, and it will cool the air down as it comes through. Any heat that's picked up is transferred to the condenser where it's uh, let off, cooled down, and then brought back around to uh, pull heat from the pasture department and transfer it to the condenser. That's the only job of this thing is to pull heat from the condenser, from the evaporator core, and bring it to the condenser. That's the only job of an air conditioning system. Any type of refrigeration system. Air conditioning means you're conditioning the air. Refrigeration system means you're cooling products. Otherwise, they work the same way. All right, so let's close this up. I remove the high side fitting by turning the little valve to isolate the valve from the vehicle. I then unclip this if I can. There we go. Unclip this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend all the high pressure gas on this side into the center. That's going to lower the pressures in my gauge. It's going to go ahead and put any gases that were in here back into the vehicle. Once that is complete, I close off my high side gauge. My low side gauge hits its lowest point. I'm going to close the low side gauge. That's going to lock off this, these two hoses. So now the only thing left is this hose. I'm going to put my cap, which keeps dirt from getting in my fitting, back on. I'm going to remove the low side. See if low side fitting from the Pontiac Green Free fits this. I grab the high side and the low side caps from the Grand Prix. Let's see if it fits. And it fits. There you go, you're a Pontiac now. It's called recycling. That's really it. Air conditioning's done, rear brakes are done. I left the back wheels because I'm probably going to do the rear shocks. Unless this video did nothing and I got nothing but breakups and stuff because I did have problems setting up today. Air conditioning's nice and cold. Turn it off. Um, it's really it for air conditioning. It's really it for rear brakes. Uh, if, this, if this all went one shot uh, with the little hiccups here and there, uh, I may continue on today and do the rear shocks. If it didn't, uh, I gotta figure out what's going on uh, with my connection. I gotta make a better connection. I may have to either find out what's going on with the wire that I have running out here, or run a new wire out here, uh, maybe a new old wire from the attic of my house to the shed to get better Wi-Fi. Because thing, things seems to be screwing up. Um, the head camera probably was because of the plug got pulled out. Uh, the battery probably died. That's why. That's why I use this. Power pack, because I can go all day with the head camera with that. But if it gets unplugged, it loses the charge, and then uh, only runs for a while. Um, battery in the, the audio thing only lasts for so long. Um, yeah, uh, that's really it. Let's take a break. Uh, I'm gonna see how this one came out. So if I come back, it'll probably be in about 20 minutes, because I gotta I'm gonna clean up all this AC stuff. Um, and get a drink, go to the bathroom, do all that happy stuff I haven't been doing while doing all this live streaming. I hope you enjoyed that. So like, subscribe, um, comment below, all that happy stuff. Uh, thanks for watching.